Hello, and welcome to Wheels Up. I'm Sierra, and I'll be your host. I am so excited to take you on an amazing journey, brought to you by the Sunrise Association, Sunrise Studios, and our friends at American Airlines. While we're on our adventure, see if you can spot Wings, our special airplane friend, in three different places. After our adventure, please join us as we do a very special craft in the Sunrise VX Treehouse. And last, but certainly not least, we will wrap things up with a very fun game of trivia. Are you ready? Fasten your seatbelts and let's go on an adventure. Here to kick us off is a special representative from American Airlines. Welcome passengers, I'm American Airlines flight attendant Jade Smith. Welcome on board our very special flight today with services from the Sunrise Association and American Airlines to visit some scary but not so scary animals. Our first stop is San Jose, Costa Rica. So buckle up, sit back and relax and enjoy the flight. Hello adventurers! Any animal lovers out there? I bet! How about scary animal lovers? Hmm, how about a compromise? We have a wild adventure planned for today. Get ready to travel the world to meet some scary but not so scary animals. But remember, the phrase don't judge a book by its cover because just because something looks scary, it doesn't mean it really is. It could actually be quite harmless. In some cases, even playful. You'll see what I mean. Fasten your seatbelts and prepare for landing as our American Airlines flight touches down in San Jose, the capital and largest city of Costa Rica. Boo! Nothing says spooky quite like bats. And that's exactly what we're here to see in the Central American country of Costa Rica. About 110 different species or kinds of bats live here. About 80 kinds are found in the country's Osa Peninsula. Does it get much scarier than that? One of the many bats found here is known as the wrinkle-faced bat. Can you see why? These rare bats have hairless faces and furry bodies. They have white masks that they lift up to cover their faces. One bat expert described the bat as looking like a very wrinkly old man with big eyes wearing a turtleneck. Fun fact number one, the bat's scientific name means 100-year-old man. These old-looking bats have a super strong bite, but what they like to sink their teeth into is juicy, sweet fruit, like yummy bananas and mangoes. Would you eat that? Did you know that bats help spread seeds and pollen that help many plants grow? Without them, we wouldn't have bananas, mangoes, and hundreds of other types of fruit. Nothing spooky about that. Fascinating. And here's a great big surprise. People might find vampire bats to be spooky, but there's nothing really all that spooky about them. The story of Count Dracula kind of gives them a bad rep. Dracula is just a made up monster who takes the form of a vampire bat. There are even some made up vampires in stories and shows who are really cute, like Vampirina or V. Hauntley. I love that! In real life, all three kinds of vampire bats are found in Costa Rica. Unlike other kinds of bats, vampire bats can run, crawl, and hop on the ground. And we know why they were named after vampires. Check out those fangs! But don't worry, unlike their fictional monster relatives, vampire bats mean us no harm. While we're here in Costa Rica, let's check out some milk snakes. Ooh, those look good. Can I get one to go? But I said milk snakes, not milk shakes. Milk snakes are found throughout Costa Rica. They look very much like the poisonous coral snake and are often mistaken for them. But can you see the difference? The milk snake has a white ring in the middle of its black stripes. That milky white stripe is not where the name comes from. Fun fact number two, its name comes from a tale about the snake drinking milk from a cow. That's just a made up story because snakes don't have lips to drink milk from a cow. That's so silly. Our friend Cameron has a milk snake and other snakes to show us. Hi there, I'm Cameron. I'm a wildlife ecologist that studies snakes. That's called a herpetologist. Right here, I have a milk snake. 
Look at that snake. Isn't he just gorgeous? He's got that red, black, and yellow or white pattern, those colorations. And the rhyme is red on black, friend of Jack. Oh, good. Red on yellow, kill a fellow. But if you're in South America, Central America, that rhyme doesn't really or always work. There are a lot of venomous coral snakes that look just like milk snakes. So it's best to know what kind of snakes you're, you're seeing, and it's actually best to just leave them alone. Let's see a bigger snake and see if we can learn something about it. All right, I'm back, and I have Salazar, the emerald tree bow with me. This snake is absolutely incredible. Their scientific name is Corallus canninus, and that means like the dog or the dog-faced snake. And they have all these heat-sensitive pits all over their face that allow them to see the heat of their prey at night. They, are, they eat mammals almost exclusively, small mammals on the forest floor. Even though they live up at the top of the trees, they'll come down every night to eat those. How cool is that? Definitely not scary. It's pretty stinking amazing. There's Salazar, the emerald tree boa. All right, I wanted to get out a really big snake for you, but she actually isn't even that big. This is the heaviest snake in the world. This is Annie, the green anaconda. She's about seven and a half feet long and she weighs over 20 pounds. When she's done growing, she'll be 15 or 16 pound, uh, feet long and weigh close to 200 pounds. That's as much as I weigh. She is gonna be absolutely gigantic. This big snake comes from South America in the Amazon rainforest and where they eat things like capybara, caiman, even turtles. And believe it or not, they can eat white-tailed deer. Yep, there's deer in South America. They're not as big as our deer here in North America, but they are still pretty big. If you eat, eat an 80-pound deer or 90-pound deer, that's what a green anaconda can do. Look at this big snake. So snakes definitely can have seemed like they're scary, but if we get to know about them, we learn a little bit more about them, we find out that they're not scary at all. They're absolutely incredible and fascinating. Just look at this snake as she slithers around on me. How fun is that? That was a lot of fun, Cameron. Thank you. Ready to see some other scary, but not so scary animals? Our American Airlines flight is here to take us to Venezuela. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a giant spider. The Goliath bird eater is not just any spider. It's the world's largest spider by weight. It weighs about six ounces, around the same weight as three tennis balls or six wooden pencils. For a spider, that's massive. Even scarier than its size though is its sound. This spider can hiss. Its hiss can be heard up to 15 feet away. But you could say its bark is worse than its bite. Its bite feels like a bee sting and its venom or poison is pretty harmless to humans. And its name is misleading because, fun fact number three, it rarely eats birds. Earthworms, beetles, and toads are more its thing. What it really wants is to be left alone, to crawl around in the rainforest of northern South America. So we'll give them some space and hop on our American Airlines flight to Europe. The European yellow-tailed scorpion can be found in southern Europe hiding out under stones or in between cracks and crevices. The one and a half inch creature likes to hide in these places and then pop out its claws to sneakily catch predators as they pass by. Whoa, did you see that? It hardly uses its stinger, and when it does, it's not very dangerous. It's one of the least harmful scorpions to humans. Even so, we're out of here. Time to hop on our American Airlines flight to Madagascar. More than 110 kinds of lemurs live in Madagascar. Most of them look so cute climbing and swinging on tree branches. The I.I., not so much. It's thought to be one of the world's weirdest primates. With its huge bat-like ears, long middle finger that it can use to scoop out coconuts, its big round eyes, and constantly growing sharp incisor teeth, the I.I. 
isn't winning any beauty contests. But these fruit, insect, and nut-eating little guys are just hanging around from their toes on forest branches and are not a danger to humans. Awesome! Our American Airlines flight is now headed to India. Let's go! The gharial is also known as the fish-eating crocodile. With its long, narrow snout and up to 110 razor-sharp teeth, it looks like a crocodile, but it's more like a close relative. But don't worry, it doesn't sink those sharp teeth into anything large. It uses them in its odd-looking snout to catch fish. Fun fact number four, its name comes from an Indian word for a type of round pot. The pot looks like the round growth that males develop on the tip of their snout. Garials are really good parents, perhaps the best of all reptiles. Females and males share parenting duties, guarding their young from predators, and these protective parents like to stay out of the way of humans. And that works for us, because here's our American Airlines flight ready to take us to Australia. Australia is one of the best places to see the world's largest fish, the whale shark. Let's dive in. The whale shark can grow to be more than 40 feet long and weigh as much as 20 tons. That's equal to the weight of three elephants. It has around 3,000 tiny teeth. Fun fact number five, it even has teeth on its eyeballs. Another cool thing is the whale shark's spots and stripes. Every pattern is unique, kind of like human fingerprints. Whale sharks gobble up tiny fish and plants with their massive mouths. And while it might seem scary to see a fish around the size of a school bus swim by, whale sharks are known as gentle giants. Sometimes divers climb onto them and catch a ride. They can seem playful with the divers. Oh, so cute! While we're having a whale of a time on this world tour, it's time to leave our scary looking but not so scary animal friends. Let's board our American Airlines flight to head to the Sunrise Treehouse for crafting. We can make some scary but not so scary animal projects there. Wow, that was such an incredible adventure. We discovered so much. Did you spot Wings the airplane? Great job. Time to get back on board our flight. Our next stop is crafting in the Sunrise Treehouse. Hi, my name is Mikey. Today we're going to be making two crafts. Our first craft is going to be a spider, and our second craft is going to be a snake. Hope you have fun! Here are the supplies that you need. Project 1, squiggly spider. Construction paper, black or any color. Scissors, glue, string, and googly eyes. Project 2, paper chain snake. Construction paper, two or three pieces, any colors. Scissors, glue, googly eyes. So for the first craft we're gonna make, we're gonna make spiders. What I'm gonna use is this black piece of paper, but you can use whatever you have around. And then I'm gonna cut out one large oval and one small oval. So the second thing we were going to do is we're going to make a small oval. So this big oval is going to be the spider's body and this small oval is going to be the spider's head. So right now I'm just going to glue them together. Next, I'm going to get two googly eyes and glue them to the spider's head. If you don't have googly eyes around you, you could just draw them on. Next, we're gonna be taking our piece of paper again. Again, if you don't have black paper, you could use whatever color paper you have around you. And we're just going to cut and we're going to make eight tiny thin paper strips. Four for each side of the oval on the spider. If you need help cutting for the legs of the spiders, 
you could ask a grown-up to help you with this. I think this spider is going to turn out looking awesome. I don't really love spiders, but one thing I like about them is they always remind me of Halloween when I get all of the candy. Now you're just gonna fold these up and then you're gonna unfold them so you get like bridges, I would say. You would just fold them back and forth and back and forth. And you're just gonna repeat these steps. So this is the last one I'm folding, and when you're done folding, you're gonna glue them on to the bottom of the spider's body, right here. So you're gonna take your glue, and you're gonna put four dots on each side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four and then you're gonna put legs on one by one at the very tip of them. So here's one, and you just put that, repeat these steps eight different times in every one. You might not wanna play with the spider's legs right when you put them on because the glue might need some time to dry and you don't wanna make them fall off, but for your next step, we're gonna be making, if you have any string, we're gonna be making a little string so you can just drop it down like this. You can hold it up here and then drop. And kind of like how a spider would hopefully not be dropping on your head. And then you can take your string, unwrap it to the length you need. And again, if you don't have string, it doesn't matter because this is just fun. And then, Take another piece of glue. Now you're gonna put the string on top of the glue. And then for me, I'm just gonna put a little bit of paper on top of the string and the glue, just to make it sure it stays sturdy and make sure nothing happens to it. And now I'm gonna put it on top and I'm just gonna wait for it to dry for a bit. So this is my final spider, and I really like how it turned out. This is a spider that I made a little while ago, and I also like how this turned out. But it really just matters how you, what you think of your spider, and if you really like it, that's awesome. And I just hope you had fun doing this first activity. The next craft that we are gonna be making is a paper chain snake. This is one that I made a little while ago before this and you can see it has a little tongue and little eyeballs and if you don't have those things it's fine you can draw them on and it's just a really fun project and a cool project so first thing you're gonna need is a piece of construction paper any colors you want I chose black white and red because the milk snake that you learned about earlier those are the colors of the snake so you're gonna want to take these piece of paper and you're gonna want to cut it Now I'm gonna cut this piece in half because you don't want it to be too thick because you want it to be able to go through the circles like you saw in the other snake that I made before. When you're cutting, be sure if you need to, ask a grown-up for help because we just want to stay safe and have fun. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this glue. The glue, I chose to use the stick glue so it dries faster and I think it would be easier to do, but you could use tape, you could use like the liquid glue, whatever suits you and whatever you have. I cut out some strips earlier, so I'm gonna start assembling my chain. So 
So we're gonna go here, we're gonna take the glue, and we're just gonna put it together. Now, here I'm taking my red, because I want it to look like a milk snake. Now I'm gonna glue it. Then I'm gonna interlock it with my little black one. And I'm gonna go. And here's the start of it. And now here's my white. And I'll glue that and just repeat these multiple steps. Wanna hear a fun fact? Do you know that snakes smell through their tongues? Uh, that sounds pretty crazy to me. And then I'll take this. Now I'm gonna glue this around. So now just keep going, making your paper chain in whatever pattern of colors you want. So here's the snake right now. And then I'm gonna be taking this point. And I don't know, I think I want my head of the snake to be black. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut out like a rounded triangle shape to make my head. So here's the head for my snake, So, and I'm just gonna add some googly eyes and a tongue. But if you don't have googly eyes, you can just draw it on. For this step, I'm gonna be using liquid glue because it's easier for me to get the eyes on. But if you don't have liquid glue, you could try with a stick glue. I just think it might be a little bit harder. Now for my tongue, I'm gonna be taking a piece of red paper that I have here, and I'm gonna cut it into a triangle shape. So here's my tongue, and I'm just gonna glue that on under the head of my snake like this. So I'm gonna put a little dab right here of glue, and now I'm gonna take a red paper, and I'm gonna put it on behind, and now it looks like a snake's hissing in. Yes. So then, I'm gonna take my glue, and I'm gonna attach it right here, in right front of the snake. Put it right here. And then there's my final snake. So this is the snake I just made. This is a snake I made a little while ago. But if your snake doesn't look like this, that's fine. As long as you're happy with it and you enjoyed the time you spent making this. So this is my finished snake craft and this is my finished spider craft. I've really enjoyed doing these crafts. Hope you had fun, bye. Wow, we had so much fun crafting with you today. We're coming in for a landing to our final destination, our exciting trivia game. I'm going to ask you 10 questions about today's adventure. There will be four answers, but only one will be correct. Can you figure out the right answer? Let's play. Welcome to Wheels Up Trivia. Question one. About 110 different kinds of bats live in A, New York, B, Costa Rica. C, the world. Or D, Gotham City. Well, Batman does live in Gotham City, but that's a made up place. Question two, wrinkle-faced bats. A, have hairless faces and furry bodies. B, are really 100 year old men. C, should use skin cream. Or D, wear white turtlenecks. 
Bats wearing clothes or using skin cream? How silly. Question three. Wrinkle-faced bats like to eat yummy. A. Pretzels. B. Popcorn. C. Fruit. Or D. Monsters. Fruit. Juicy, sweet, yummy fruit. Question four. One type of snake found in Costa Rica is the... A. Milkshake B. Milk Snake C. Australian Cobra Or D. Master Viper The Master Viper is a character from Kung Fu Panda. Question 5. The Goliath Bird Eater is a... A. Giant Bird B. Hungry Bird C. Giant Spider Or D. None of the above It's a big ol' spider! Question 6. The Goliath Bird Eater weighs as much as 6 A. Pennies B. Pencils C. Pizzas Or D. Parrots So many funny objects in these answer choices! Question 7. The Goliath Bird Eater eats A. Earthworms B. Beetles C. Toads Or D. All of the above Contrary to its name, the Goliath Bird Eater rarely eats birds. Question 8. The European Yellow-Tailed Scorpion hides A. In hampers and trash cans B. Under stones or in between cracks C. On top of ancient pyramids Or D. In refrigerators and kitchen sinks Right under those stones or in between cracks Question 9. The I.I. is a A. Lemur B. Snake C. Model Or D. Spider It's definitely not a model, huh? And our final question, number 10. The whale shark is A. The world's largest fish B. Playful with divers C. Not known for having any teeth Or D. Both A and B Correct! Great job! Thank you so much for playing trivia with me today for Wheels Up Trivia. We'll see you next time! Wow! You did such a great job with trivia today! Thanks so much for watching this episode of Wheels Up. I had so much fun with you today! Did you know that there are so many more Wheels Up adventures available for you to enjoy? Just head to our YouTube channel or download the Sunrise Studios app, available on your mobile devices, iOS or Android, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. We can't wait to see you on our next flight with Wheels Up, brought to you by the Sunrise Association, Sunrise Studios, and American Airlines. See you next time. Bye.